On the question of faith and reason, uh, even if you consider the encyclica uh, Fides and Ratio, with which I completely agree indeed, uh, I have a reservation about the, the, the formulation of the question. Because as an historian of philosophy, which is well known, uh, I wonder why we take for granted that there is such a distinction between faith and reason. At least we can say that during the 10 first or 12 first centuries of our area, uh, this distinction was, was not made. Not made by the Christian theologians, who, by the way, were not using theology at that moment, and not really uh, admitted by the uh, non-Christian thinkers. They were chasing truth with all means, uh, religion, uh, philosophy, rhetoric, uh, and so on. The distinction between faith and reason was built up uh, with the foundation of the universities when there were suddenly two faculties, faculty of theology, the first, and the faculty of art for all the rest. From that moment on, during the medieval period, the distinction between theology, faith on one side, and arts, that is sciences and so on, and so pure reason was built. And when there was the Enlightenment, it was exactly in continuity uh, with the di medieval distinction. And this distinction has flourished up to the moment, which happened in the, I would say, at the turn of the 19th, 20th century, at the moment when reason itself the so-called uh, pure reason, the self-sustaining reason, uh, the reason imposing uh, the principle of rationality and so on, the a priori reason, became at odd in defining itself. The crisis of principles did not only happen in fundamental physics, and we are not we did not got out of that yet. But in, it is also in, 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 in philosophy as well. So now, the opposition between reason and faith implies that reason knows exactly what it can do, what it cannot know, and knows the limits of reason. Beyond the limits, this is the rationality of faith, okay? Very simple. But now, uh, reason, as uh, developed and referred to by the best philosophers, there is not a lot of them, uh, and this is a euphemism, who would claim to have a, an a priori definition of reason anymore. We have only an a posteriori use of reason. That is, as long as we produce arguments, as long as we, we put rationality into new fields, we say that this is reason. But the new fields we try to make more rational were uh, and are uh, beyond the limits of pure reason uh, as understood in the past. I give some examples. The question of uh, the soul is now ruled partly, largely, by not biological uh, sciences or uh, sciences of mind and things like that, but by psychoanalysis. It is the so-called unconsciousness, which is the real field where the question of the soul is now uh, studied and, and practiced. The question of, of, uh, of the word, what is the word? The question of the word now, it's very clear, the word is not the uh, summation of all the possible objects. The word is a finite word. Nature is finite. Nature is historical. We can destroy nature. 
nature is uh, the place which is under the threat of uh, uh, global warming, but also, also uh, waste, production of waste, of uh, any uh, shortcomings of supplies and things like that. Which means that now we cannot imagine that, that we can continue to rationalize the word. We have to, to come to terms with the word and with the limits of the word. So to impose rationality will mean either a catastrophe or something completely different. And same thing for the question of God. The so-called death of God means, in fact, that philosophy was unable to say anything anymore about God. So, uh, so and philosophy was not ready to say, to, to, to say I am... Power of power, I'm silent in front of that question is too difficult for me. The uh, philosopher said, we can think without God. But in fact, it was not God who was dead. It was the way philosophy, modern philosophy could ask the question of God. And so the question of God has survived the death of God easily. And the so-called return of God of religion, it's stupid to say that. Because uh, religion and God has never uh, left the scene. Uh, so simply, now it comes back beyond our decision that God is irrational. But God is not irrational. It is our rationality which is too narrow for God. So the, it's why now we are more experiencing an expansion of new uh, forms of rationality beyond the limit of the so-called pure reason of metaphysics than uh, any conflict between, between faith on, uh, and reason. And faith is, for some questions, some issues, the right form of rationality in the same way than in art, for instance. Rationality is not mathematical. You have a good feeling, a good appreciation of what means something in art, which cannot be rationalized, so to speak, if you think of narrow understanding of reason. Same thing for uh, intersubjectivities. Intersubjectivity cannot, cannot be explained simply by the law of, uh, of the market or by uh, biology. When you deal with another self, uh, there are some other rules. Those rules are known. There's a rule of uh, hatred, love, seduction, uh, deal, uh, equality, enfin, many other things which should become rational. And there is violence in the relation to the other when the rationality, the special rationality, which can make sense in that situation, is not known. So, this action with faith and, and reason is uh, an old-fashioned, historically questionable, and uh, rationally inaccurate way to ask the question.